This is where business ideas and passions turn into profit. Whether you're dreaming of becoming your own boss, but don't know how to get started, or have already started a side hustle and wish to grow it exponentially, your host, Victoria Wick, can help you turn your passion-based business ideas into profit. Welcome to Million Dollar Passion. Here is your host, world-renowned jewelry designer and home shopping TV celebrity, Victoria Wick. Welcome to another episode of the Million Dollar Passion Podcast. First of all, welcome everybody. And if you haven't uh, subscribed to, to my show yet, please go ahead and do so, especially for those of you who are on YouTube. I don't know why I took uh, so long to do this episode. Um, it, it, it is something that's very, very much in my heart. Uh, something that I'm extremely passionate about. In fact, I actually founded a whole company based on my passion on this. And uh, so I'm actually really glad to be able to do this episode. It's a solo episode. I have no guests. Um, it is about conflict-free diamonds. Um, I know that Christmas season is coming right up around the corner. In fact, we are right in the middle of it now. And every year, um, you know, millions of Americans buy uh, diamonds of some sort because jewelry is something, something like 75% of Americans have, American women want, have jewelry on their wish list for Christmas every year. So I want to talk a little bit about conflict-free diamonds. Many of you know that I've been in the jewelry business for over 35 years. Um, about 33 years of that, I was in my own business, but before that, I actually worked for other people as well. And uh, the idea of conflict-free diamonds is something that's kind of... Um, really new. And many of you, I'm talking to so many of you who are millennial buyers, you know, uh, trying looking for your uh, bridal ring for the first time. And it's such an exciting time, you know, in your life, uh, such an event, you know, the anticipation of getting married, starting a whole new chapter that should be uh, full of excitement, full of anticipation in many good ways. And this is when you are building your, uh, the building blocks of your life with your significant other. So, um, and then, of course, there are quite a few of you who are getting married for the second time as well, you know, uh, learning from the first one, probably, and, and starting a whole new life as well. So, again, this uh, idea of conflict-free diamonds. Now, if you are a diehard believer of earth mine diamond and you think that just because you get a piece of paper from some retailer saying that we guarantee that everything's conflict-free, um, I don't judge you by that. Um, I just want to give you some information about what I know, having been in the industry, having been the leader in the industry for a really long time. Um, what I know about it, and then you guys can all, you're, you're, it's a free country. You guys can make all your own judgment. Um, so let's talk about conflict-free diamonds. First off, what is the, con what is the definition of conflict-free? Because we know that there are 3.8 million people who have died um, in the in the mining, the cutting, you know, all the because of the diamond industry. So basically, um, in in most of the the you know killing and the death and all that has stopped. Okay, I'm gonna just you know put that out there right now. There is no uh, diamond war. But if you've um, ever you know, what is the moral standard uh, for the word conflict free? For example, um, is there such thing as true conflict free oil? Um, is there a such thing as, um, you know, so I just want to ask you that question. I'm going to close this whole session with that, um, with that question. What is your moral standard for conflict free? Uh, have you ever watched, by the way, the movie Blood Diamond with Leonardo DiCaprio? If you have, good for you. Uh, significant, you know, I mean, in my opinion, that was really well done. Um, it's very factual. Um, you know, at that time that movie was made, all that stuff was going on, the killing, the kidnapping, the war, the smuggling, all of that stuff was going on very active, uh, which um, now if you have not watched the movie, I suggest that you do that because it is um, it's something that's to me, it's very important. That movie, there was such an outcry when the movie came out. It was there was such an outcry and outrage about how diamonds are mined, uh, how it gets here. And what causes all of the, you know, all of the destruction, the death, and the suffering? Because American brides want a, a white rock for their for their wedding. So what happened was that particular uh, movie sort of led to that, along with a lot of other things, such as the internet. People are able to Google stuff and actually go to these places virtually by you know by way of internet. That it led to um, this whole idea now 
that you know a lot of retailers um, are promoting their diamonds as a conflict-free, and some of them will even advertise that they strictly adhere to the Kimberly process. Um, so if you haven't watched the movie, watch the movie, because this will give you a lot of context. Now, if you watch the movie, you saw a lot of innocent people, mostly young men, including little boys ki being kidnapped to work in these mines. And, you know, the lucky ones work there, you know, for several years before they escape. But a lot of them actually um, don't escape and they die. So the 3.8 million people that have died in connection with diamond mining, mostly in the 23 uh, diamond producing countries, mostly in Africa, that uh, fact actually comes, it's not my word, it comes from Amnesty International and a lot of other international um, you know, authorities. And I don't think there's a dispute on that, by the way, you know, diamonds been mined for the last thousand years in those countries. So, so I ask you a question today, I can tell you that many of the, you know, cause I'm in the business, many of the people that will tell you that, you know, we adhere to Kimberly process and all of that. The things that are going on now is, you know, do you think it's okay for children under 18, children that are nine, 10, five years old to be living in the mine, living near the mine, not going to school, not seeing medical care because their parents, you know, both parents work, they, they don't have babysitter or anything like that. So even though these kids are not mining actively at, you know, age seven or eight or nine, they're not going to school. They're not getting educated. To me, that's conflict. Okay. Like, um, <laughs> How can a retailer, you know, like in America who has never been there, like your local jeweler who has never been there, guarantee you that their, um, you know, diamonds do not hurt the economy, do not hurt the environment, do not have any kids in those mines because they don't even know where these mines are half the time when they actually get it, you know, to their stores and sell it. Um, what I know for a fact is this, using that as a backdrop. So... I'm not saying that, you know, every retailer in America is out there to screw you, okay? I'm just saying that maybe some of them actually believe that they are getting true conflict-free diamonds, you know, the war uh, in Sierra Leone, all the warlords that have actually stopped, so people aren't killing themselves. But if you have a higher moral standard of, um, you know, what, what is happening instead of the killing, killings, um, I, don't, I don't think it's conflict-free. Now, if you tell me, you know, I'm getting, giving you this piece of paper that says, you know, I'm going to give you, I, there's a seal of my stamp that says this diamond is conflict free and I'm Victoria Wick. Would you buy it from me? I, you wouldn't, <laughs> you know, if you get it from some major retail store that has, you know, about 50 stores, would you buy it from them? They don't have a mine up there. So I don't know how they can. The other thing I'm going to tell you is um, I will say that in some mines, they may have you know, rules are posted, like, you know, kids under 18 can't work here, you know, whatever. But, um, and I tell you this, I've been to a lot of factories all over the world. I've been to just numerous countries. I mean, I can't even name half the countries that I've actually been to because I've been to a lot of them because I care about people. I care about manufacturing. I care about quality. So I actually took the time to go and meet people, work among them, eat with them. And I can tell you, um, they can post it all day long, but there's a lot of times they'll just look the other way around because they want to have, they want a cover story that, you know, hey, you know, our mind's strict about this or that. But in reality, they just can't really enforce that because they would lose half of their, half of their uh, workers. You know, they, they reproduce a lot. There's a lot of kids there. So um, for me, that's not conflict free. The other thing I'm going to tell you uh, that this may, this may shock you is that most diamond mines Okay, in all over the world, uh, there are a few exceptions, and they're not in Africa. But most diamond mines, you know, in fact, none of the diamond mines in Africa have their own cutting facilities. So what happens is they mine diamonds. Uh, some of them are, you know, uh, some of them are smuggled out. Some of them are done by, you know, the the warlords that uh, the little village lords. Uh, some of them are government sanctioned. You know, whatever. They're all, you know, sort of like mined there. Then they're all shipped in individual packages to cutting centers around the world. Most cutting centers are in places like um, India, Russia, uh, you know, Belgium. You've got cutting centers all over the world, um, and there are just quite a few of them. When they grab um, 50 carats from here, five carats from there, one carat from there, do you think they have a chain of custody for every single stone? We're talking millions of carats. We're talking millions and millions of stones. No, they can't. 
So in the cutting centers, they're all mixed in because these cutting centers are not going to cut it and send it back to the miner. They actually buy the, buy the stuff. They mix it all up. I mean, they have to, they, you know, it's, it's like, it's like if you're a farmer and you buy, or if you're, if you're, you know, like a, a, a wine producer and you are buying grapes from Mexico, grapes from California, grapes from wherever, um, and you're having to uh, mark every little bottle of grape, this is from this uh, winery, that's from that farm, you can't. It's, it's like saying, I'm having a certificate for every single grain of rice in the bag. It's, that doesn't happen. So to me, uh, the guarantee is really a suspect. Um, so those two things happen. Now, as I sit here and tell you, is there no conflict? Is there no place where we can get conflict-free diamonds then? Yes, there are. Uh, you can get them in Canada. Uh, Canadian, Canadians do mine um, diamonds and it's mined in the Arctic Circle within Canada. And it is not, you, you know, it's so cold. They only, you know, mine a few times, like a couple of months a year. And they use a lot of technology like robots um, and grown-ups that really, really have to use the engineering science to go do that. So Canadian diamonds are uh, laser engraved with the maple leaf before it leaves the country. So that's how you know that it's a Canadian diamond. Now, um, my daughter started her diamond um, company uh, because she was really outraged. Her company is called Rachel and Victoria. Her name is actually Rachel, Rachel Victoria Wick. Um, when she went to look for, um, you know, just to shop because, you know, her mother is a diamond, um, you know, I, her mother is a designer, so she didn't really did not have intentions of buying any diamonds there, but she just, I'm busy, so she just wanted to shop, you know, for styles, and she walked into a retail store, this happened um, in San Diego, a very upper end store, it sat right next to Tiffany's, and those of you who live in San Diego, you'll know which one I'm talking about, it's a pretty high end store, and um, she asked if uh, she could see the Canadian diamonds and the uh, you know the person behind the counter said yeah absolutely he showed her a bunch of stuff and she said um well can i where's a little maple leaf because i've heard that it has a maple leaf um you know on the girdle and he said you know when you buy it we'll engrave it for you so obviously that's that's not kosher <laughs> it's not right because canadian diamonds are actually they leave um, Canada before it, it's exported here. Um, the other place we can get um, true conflict-free diamonds would be uh, places like Australia, like an Argyle mine, which out of Australia, uh, they don't produce like high quality uh, white diamonds. They do a lot of the champagne diamonds and, you know, other color diamonds, but they don't use child labor. They don't, they don't have children there. Uh, they don't use, they don't, you know, pay subpar wages. Um, so those two, I know about off the top of my head. And then the other option you have, if you're really into diamonds, is lab-grown diamonds. So these are diamonds that are, they're not cubic zirconia, they're not moissanite. They actually will DNA clone a mother diamond. So they'll actually take a diamond and DNA clone it. Uh, it grows it in the exact same process that Mother Earth does, but it does it much faster. It does it in a lab. So that, in fact, uh, uh, Mr. DiCaprio actually, uh, is an investor in one of those, um, you know, one of the processes. So those are the uh, choices you have. Now, I do want to tell you that the reason why this was very dear to me is that, you know, when I was um, getting married, <laughs> I didn't know anything about this. Um, you know, we did not know the whole backstory about the destruction and all of that. So mo most of you who are my age probably got married. In a, and, and frankly, I don't think there was that much of a, you know, oh, the war didn't actually happen either at that point. But I, I, I've grown and I've not really been much more educated about this. And, um, you know, the more I question about it, you know, the, the more I question within the industry, for example, when I go to a trade show and I listen to some diamond guy lecturing about what's wrong with the lab grown diamonds, what's wrong with the CZs, what's wrong with all, everything other than the diamond, I ask the question. And, and then, you know, he'll tell me or he'll tell the audience that the diamond industry is the most generous industry in the world. They are out there giving jobs to the poorest countries in the world. Okay. So I, I would ask, ask them, okay, well, you've been mining diamonds in Africa for a thousand years. And diamonds have sold, you know, at some premium, crazy high prices, higher than any other gemstone in the world. So why are these countries still poor? Shouldn't they be 
like pretty much ruling the world because they have it pretty abundantly over there. It's not also di- the other thing about diamonds, they're not actually rare. They, there's, it's, a, it's one of the more plentiful di- uh, gemstones in the world. So why are they still poor since you're so generous? That, that's my first question. The more questions I asked, logical questions like that I asked, the more I was educated. So I just want to give you some education so that you can make a, a decision based on information because I didn't have information. You know, when I, when I was growing up, uh, I didn't have information that's, for example, like sun damage can actually kill you. Uh, sun damage can cause cancer. I didn't have any of that information. Thank God I was allergic to sun pretty much uh, most of my life. So I actually couldn't go out in the sun on the beach like everybody else could. But a lot of my friends actually did get uh, skin cancer, melanoma, just from just over baking their bodies the whole time. So, you know, we didn't know that. Um, when I was growing up, I, you know, nobody told us that cigarette smoking can actually kill you. Um, and they, um, I mean, I think there was lawsuits and, you know, all this coverage about, how, you know, the secondhand smoking as well. Uh, we now know that firsthand smoking definitely kills you and secondhand smoking kills you most of the time as well. Again, I think that if you had information, um, I just want you to know if you're going to still go and buy the earth mine diamond, um, just try to make sure that you stick with the Canadian lab grown di- Canadian diamonds, or you go with the argyle diamonds. But I think a piece of paper isn't something that, um, you know, that can guarantee you that um, they're paying, you know, like high wages, or they have no children there, or, you know, all those stuff. Like for me, the moral standard of conflict free has to be a little bit higher than nobody's dying right now, S- especially if it's from the same people that um, caused 3.8 million people to die. So that's my thing on conflict-free diamonds. And if you want more information, you can go and check out uh, my daughter's website, which is rachelandvictoria.com, R-A-C-H-E-L and Victoria, it's the word and, victoria.com. That as far as we know, it's the only website, the only bridal site dedicated to millennial brides that sell only, uh, you know, conflict, true conflict free. So we don't give you pieces of paper. We don't even deal with earth mine diamonds. Uh, we only deal with, you know, diamonds that we know for a fact uses technology to grow it and you know, all the other stuff. So anyway, um, that's my uh, information on um, conflict free diamonds. And uh, I wish you all a wonderful holiday season this year. And uh, just keep, you know, doing everything that you're doing. I, I just love um, you know, connecting with you every week. And, uh, you know, also check out all, a lot of my, uh, all the freebie, um, you know, the freebie uh, webinars that I give once a month. Um, you know, it's really, uh, it's helped a lot of people to, you know, kind of unlock the, the secret to certain parts of their businesses. So anyway, thank you so much for listening. And until next time, please stay healthy and happy. And I wish you an exceptionally happy uh, Christmas. Uh, That's how they say it in England, you know, happy Christmas. So I just, I guess, uh, uh, happy and Merry Christmas and um, stay well. You've been listening to Million Dollar Passion, where we turn dreams into reality and passion into profit. According to ancient Chinese proverb, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Congratulations on taking that first step today. For more information on how Victoria can help you turn your business idea into a million dollars and to download Victoria's free ebook on passion-based business ideas, visit milliondollarpassion.com. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show on your favorite podcast player.